Hi, so as promised, this is the second uh, video today. I've just got off the uh, conference call with the Chief Investment Officer at uh, Julius Baer. Um, as I mentioned in the earlier video, Julius Baer is the third largest Swiss bank, but they are not an investment bank, so it's purely a private bank. They just deal with uh, uh, private clients. Um, I've been a, a client of theirs for uh, many years, and they were just basically running through their kind of view of the world and where it is now. And it broadly falls into um, a few different areas. So the first one is the uh, monetary and fiscal response that they're really waiting for from all of the uh, countries. And their, their main point was that uh, there needs to be, you know, not the kind of current unilateral actions that the country are taking but there needs to be a joined up approach to this like there was during the 2008-2009 crisis. In fact the solution suggested which I think is one being pursued by Switzerland if that was my understanding is that they're going to issue a 30-year perpetual bond at zero percent coupon um, that will uh, be around five to ten percent of the country's GDP the central bank will buy this bond and then that money can just be given to whoever it needs to be given to. And whereas in the past financial crisis, all the money had to go to support the banks and the financial institutions and everything, this time it's really gonna to go to the man in the street. It's gonna to go to everybody. And it's, uh, it's a once in a lifetime, uh, one-off uh, kind of approach to just basically get through this situation because they don't know how long it will last and there's just so many uncertainties but it literally affects every single person uh, in the whole economy. So I guess, you know, the financial crisis was a, a rich person's problem. Uh, this is really a problem for everybody from the window cleaner to the hairdresser to the, uh, to the employee. Um, and so the fiscal response needs to approach this. And, and he feels that this is something that everybody is moving towards and that this will be the response. And when that response is there, that will give the markets a chance to kind of uh, uh, breathe again. Um, the other things he pointed out were there are kind of three base scenarios that they build all of their models off. Um, the first one is that this is just a shock. Um, and the idea that it's just a shock means that basically everybody starts to recover, it's back to business as usual, um, and everything is all okay. Um, they now have that down to 5%. So they believe there's only a 5% chance that this is a short, sharp shock. Um, they then have a systemic uh, risk, which means uh, uh, probably a depression, a really long uh, time social unrest, you know, all of those things that come with that. They believe that to be a 20% chance of, uh, of happening. And then there's a base case. And the base case is for a recession uh, lasting around six months. Uh, they believe there's a 75% chance of that. Um, they actually put in the recession scenarios, they had a load of targets for various asset classes. And I noticed the S&P 500 in there was at 3,000 points. Well, I think today it's under 2,500. So even in a recession scenario, um, it looks like the S&P 500 is underpriced. And in fact, they did say that if you, you know, asset stripped the S&P 500, there's at least 2,000 uh, points of value in it and if uh, if the economy is vaguely functioning then it's 3,000 points and so you know we're already in the you know below two two and a half thousand points so I think there is obviously a lot of recovery potentially built into the S&P 500 um, but interestingly I mean they, they pointed out that REITs have been oversold um, that there's incredible pockets of value uh, sitting in some real estate investment trusts um, but actually their general advice was it's too late to sell and it's too early to buy. And I think that's probably quite good advice. Um, their view was to uh, sit on the fence for a little bit longer. Um, but when you can see the fiscal response from the global community, when they have taken care of improving monetary policy and fiscal policy, that's probably the time to then get back involved in the markets because uh, then things will start to uh, you know, gradually improve and, uh, uh, and move forwards. Um, so an interesting, uh, an interesting call. Um, there are some dislocations of price which is leading to um, uh, value, um, but like, uh, like they said, probably a little bit too early to get involved. So I think also this fiscal response is really important for, um, uh, for small businesses. I, I said in the video earlier, some of the responses that have already come from the UK government, we really need the US government to now step up because uh, um, that, that's obviously the biggest economy in the world. Um, we need the Congress to pass the bill to allow the, the response to help small businesses 
there. Um, I've heard that four Congress people have just been tested uh, positive for the virus, so I hope they can still get together and vote on this and get this, uh, get this through. Um, if it's the last thing they do, that would be great. But anyway, um, that's all uh, I'm, I'm going to do for this video. Um, stay safe out there. I wish you all have a, a temperature of 36.6 degrees, and I will see you tomorrow.